five, four, three, two, one, zero. Oh no! Oh hello, my little poppy cockers and boulder dashers! It has been a while, has it not? Has it not? I don't know why I'm on top of the furnace, keeping my butt warm. Yes, apologies for the hiatus, but as you can see, it's not that I haven't been busy in Minecraft over the past few weeks in between episodes. Look at all that. We've got sugarcane going on so that we can build some books to finally use up some of these 36 levels of experience we have amassed as we journey through the Galacticraft mod. If you uh, want to catch up, on the previous episode, you can click over there somewhere. If you want to watch all the episodes, you can click the link below it. That's how it works here. Let's get cracking. Firstly, I am going to describe to you what I've been up to. You've seen the sugarcane farm. There is a problem with that, which I will get to in a moment. But we've got this. I don't think you saw this last time. An oil refinery. Uh, I went out at the end of the last episode and filled these liquid canisters and started refining the oil. Oh my god, it takes so much oil with which to refine. Look at this. I, I think that's... I don't really know how it works, if I'm being honest with you. And sometimes I'm not. But yes, that's how much oil. We've got 2,000 out of 2,400. And I've refilled that using these canisters quite some time. So I think we need a significant amount of oil. What's that? Oh, that's just the coal generator powering that. Possibly. I don't even know if I've got it hooked up right, but... It seems to be powered on its own. Over here, we've got the oxygen compressor. Ooh! And the oxygen collector! Ah! I don't know if they're hooked up right either, but apparently once... I think I need another coal generator and some more wiring and stuff of that ilk. But once that's all up and running, we'll be able to build the oxygen tanks we need to fit to our... What's it called? Spacesuit. And then... As you have already seen... Oops, sorry, I've got Skype going on in the background. We've got this. Ah, this majestic, huge thing here, which is going to build the rocket necessary to propel us to the moon! So that's what's been going on. I have been busy. The reason I haven't recorded much of uh, the Minecraft adventure so far, in between episodes, how do I not have enough dirt? To fill the hole that I just made. That's strange. The reason, the reason, cats and kittens, is that it has been slow going. It just hasn't made for good viewing. I have basically just sat looking at recipes, making the stuff, staring at the Galacticraft wiki and going, um, 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 I've forgotten how to do this, I've forgotten how to do that. Just not very interesting at all. But here we are. We have built all the machines we need, I believe. So we can just get the final bits and pieces of resources. I say final, there's bloody loads to do. Let's go to sleep here. There is so much to do. Well, that brings us to today's episode. And the problem with the sugarcane farm. Got all the sugarcane, brilliant. I've actually made stacks and stacks of paper. So that's all going well. The one thing I don't have, of course, is leather to make the books. So, that's a problem. There are no cows around here. I am being hamstrung, hamstrung by the lack of cows. So today, I figured rather than just mining down below, as you're used to seeing so far, and, you know, looking out for the odd cow, I'm gonna go on a journey. Look, look at all the paper, 64 paper, 32 paper. We're going to go on a voyage. It's time we got off this island. Out of the ocean biome and see if we cannot... Yeah, I'm going to take these with me. Fill those. I need the pipette. Oh, I've got the pipette. There it is. Aluminium wire. We can pop that away for now. Bucket. That might be useful. I should probably craft some extra mine axes. Mine axes? Pickaxes. We're also running low on coal, so we do need to go mining. And you need a lot of ore with which to uh, 
the, the exotic ores, I mean, the, the your tins, your aluminiums, your coppers. Need so much of that. Probably need some more silicon as well. To craft the, the heavy sheets of crap to build the rocket with. Do I have everything? Three pork. I may not see land for days. So I'll, I'll bugger it. I'll take all the pork. I have a bow. I have a bit of wood. Some iron. Do I need the redstone? Probably not. No, whatever. I'm probably underprepared, but I'm not going to sit around thinking about it for days. So let's just get going. I should have made a map. Would that have been useful? I don't know. Oh, I should... Oh, good thinking. I'll check the uh, location of this island. God, can you imagine if I lost all of this? I sailed across the ocean and could never find it again. Um, shut up! Uh, 64Y. Well, we don't need that. Oh, we're essentially just, like, at spawn. Zero, zero. Pretty much. Which way to go, guys? Which way to go? See where the sun is. Okay, the sun's going this direction. So we shall have it set in front of us as we are sailing. The first thing of note that I want to tell you guys is I met one of you. I think I, I mentioned it briefly on Twitter, but yes, I traveled across the continent. I went to Holland and I met a subscriber. It was, uh, how should I put this, an interesting experience for both of us. I'm not going to say his name because it might incriminate him. Hello, Squidoos. Uh, literally incriminate him. It was a mad weekend. Uh, the subscriber in question has, has got a distinction. If you draw a Venn diagram of people who don't care about anything. You've got, um, oh, we found land. We have found land already. This is good news. Excellent. Let's hunt out those cows. Yeah, people who just don't give a shit. Amongst them include my subscribers. You guys are just too cool for school, man. You've also got the Dutch. The Dutch really don't give a shit about anything. And then on top of that, you've got New Zealanders. They really don't give a shit about anything. I don't think there are... There's anyone in the middle of this Venn diagram except the one person I went to meet. And let me tell you, we partied pretty hard. And by pretty hard, I mean he nearly died. I wish I could say this is just hyperbole, but at one point in this weekend which I will forever refer to as fear and loathing in Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, there was talk of ambulances being called. It got that out of hand. There were things that went down. It's, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering whether I'm going to get charged by the hotel as well. We trashed that room. There are some stains and smells in that hotel room that we shared together. That I don't think they're ever going to get out. So, yeah, that was my weekend meeting a subscriber. What am I doing here? I'm just wandering across the wilderness. I will share some video right now of uh, my trip to Amsterdam. Obviously, this is a family-friendly channel, so I've had to edit out the bits that... Well, you, you know Amsterdam. It's, it's famous for its sins and vices. So uh, here's a little, a little holiday video of my time in Amsterdam with all the nasty bits cut out. Well, it's a beautiful evening. Thanks for watching! Let's get on to questions, shall we, as I wander around and look for a place to set up our new base. Our temporary mining station. Kira Natural says, five episodes in, and my subs feed only just shows that this series exists. Bad, YouTube. Bad. My friend, you're not wrong. I don't know what the problem is with YouTube not delivering videos to subscribers feeds you choose to see this stuff you, you check out my channel or someone else's channel and you go hey I like this guy's stuff I want to see more of it 
Isn't that what the subscription box is about? Isn't that what the feed is about? The reason to click the button! It's not a suggestion! It's, I want to see more of this stuff! But apparently no. YouTube is... broken. As always. Davignon! In reference to my... I'm loath to call it singing. <laughs> in the last episode. Davignon says, this place is amazing, I like this. Davin Yun says, why are you not on X Factor? Uh, I was. I was a little known fact about me was I didn't I never made it to the TV show. Kinda. But uh, I was in the audition. And that is a story all on its own. I must tell you about that sometime. Going for an audition at an X Factor show is weird. The stuff you see behind the scenes and how they run the whole affair is just bonkers. Bonkers, I say. So I'll tell you about that some other time. On the topic of singing, who is your favourite artist slash band besides your brother? Also, who is your least favourite? Hmm, good questions. Uh, my favourite band isn't Slipknot. Uh, I, I know I spend most of my days talking about Slipknot in videos and you probably wish I'd shut the bloody hell up. But no, not Slipknot. My favourite band and one that is underappreciated, underheard and underknown is Thrice. If you have not heard Thrice, you need to do yourself a favour and check them out. They are geniuses. Geniuses on hiatus as well. Uh, hopefully they'll return again soon, but I have followed their career for the last decade or so. And I love everything they do. Really need to think about setting up shop as well. They started off all kind of punk, then they dabbled with kind of thrash metal almost. Then they've gone into just classic rock and then soundscape experimental stuff. And then back to classic rock. It's just there's something for everyone with Thrice. It's absolutely marvellous. Uh, they did this one concept album, which... Oh, we've got mobs appearing now and I'm stuck in a forest. This is not good. Oh, I don't have a bed either. Ah, back off, back off, back off. Oh, this is not good. Oh, I don't want to die and return to spawn. That will be a disaster. Let's hide on top of the tree. Tree tops for me. Maybe I can do a bit of parkour. Yeah, Thrice, they did this one album. If you're going to start anywhere, check out the Alchemy Index. Is that light over there? Maybe we should go explore that. The Alchemy Index. Can't place torches on trees. The Alchemy Index was a series of uh, it was four discs, six tracks to a disc. And each one was themed around the classical elements, earth, fire, wind and water. And it's just genius. The Water album is just... It's brilliant, there's like a track, ah, there's a track on there called Night Diving, and as a scuba diver I can genuinely say it feels, the whole song is just, it feels like you're scuba diving, it's genius! The Fire album, speaking of fire, is heavy, it's really just, it balls to the wall metal. Uh, the Air album is, as you can imagine, nice and floaty and acoustic and ah. Oh, Brilliant! The Earth album is all just unplugged acoustic instruments. Just acoustic guitars, they're playing cajons instead of drums. Um, and just other clever things, like the last track of the Earth album is like a eulogy. They're all kind of singing this kind of funeral song. But the, the microphone is in a coffin. And slowly towards the end of the song you hear... Um, just dirt being piled onto it, so the track fades out like that way, which is eerie, I must admit. Oh, this place looks as good as any to begin the mining! What about my least favourite? Um, there are a lot of awful bands, aren't there? Th people like Kesha. I, I hate... What's her face? Nicki Minaj. I really dislike Nicki Minaj. I think we can all objectively agree that she... Is bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Nicki Minaj. Who else have we got? They're just people who are bad. I guess I don't have anyone. I like I. 
I really hate. I've not planned this answer out at all, as you can probably tell. There's no one that I completely and utterly despise. There are some people whose their songs come on and go, oh god, turn it off. Like, I'm not a fan of Coldplay. I can't think of anything more boring. Or Enya. Think of Enya. The most <laughs> bloody Enya. The most boring musician that ever existed. Also, I learned the other day, the second highest grossing music artist in Ireland, despite never having performed a concert. Think of that. She is, of course, second only to U2. Another band who I just... Ah, terrible. So dreary and dull. It's like the music equivalent of soy milk. Uh, and Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. I don't understand. It feels like a joke that I'm kind of missing out on. You know? It's like everyone appreciates Bob Dylan, but it just it doesn't connect with me for some reason. I don't hate him. I just hear like a random, rambly old man. Uh, I've been told the lyrics are fantastic, but I can't get behind those either. He just it doesn't do anything for me. Once you've heard one Bob Dylan song, in my opinion, you've heard them all. Interestingly enough, a few weekends ago, I was um, in an art gallery in Exeter, and they had some original Bob Dylan works. And we're walking around this gallery, um, and we saw some brilliant stuff that we, we really, really liked. Uh, and the, the sales clerk, is that the right word? The curator, perhaps, was um, really giving us the hard sell on all these paintings. She was just flattering. I mean, these were like £2,000 paintings. And I guess she honestly thought I could afford them. But yeah, so she was showing us around. We saw some brilliant stuff. And then she was like, oh, you must see the original Dylan. I'm like, okay. I, I was vaguely aware he was an artist, but I, I wasn't... I've no, I don't think I've ever seen his stuff. So anyway, we went into this back room. They had loads of Dylan. And Christ on a bike. His art is as bad as his music. But again, because it's Bob Dylan, everyone worships it. Um, she asked me... <laughs> the woman asked me what I thought of it. And I just... I didn't know how to answer. I was going to lie and say, yeah, it's really cool. But what came out was just a... Uh, and she could tell. Her face, man, she looked like I'd just killed her dog. So that was quite funny. Yeah, Bob Dylan is probably one of them up there. Davin closes his questions with, um, plus, uh, I would be in my first or second week of a new school at the time of the next episode. Bloody hell, you didn't predict there was going to be this much of a hiatus. You're probably on the verge of graduating your PhD by now, but... Yes, uh, any tips in general on school? Um, not really, not really. You're a, you're a genuinely affable, nice chap. I'm sure you will have no trouble making friends and fitting in. Uh, in terms of academics, I would just say, don't stress about trying to figure out what you want to do now. This is weird pressure that I've never understood on school students. I may have mentioned this before. To be excellent at, like, 11 different fields of study. No human, no adult human out in the real world after university or college is good at every subject on earth. So, yeah, don't stress about it. And when people say, oh, you need to figure out what you need to do, you've got to figure it out because you need to knuckle down and focus on those subjects. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. There's plenty of time to figure it out, especially in this day and age. It's not like the olden days where... Why are you not amalgamating and creating space? Is what the teachers say. Uh, no, you just don't worry about it. You'll, you'll figure it out as you go along. Most people these days switch careers, I think it's like once every seven years. So there is no rush. Don't worry about it. Uh, what are you interested in doing, by the way? Have you got it all figured out? That'd be interesting to, to hear from both Davin and anyone else who wants to answer, who is of college age. Love to know what you're planning or whether you don't have a plan and you're cool with that. Let me know in the comments. Speaking of odd work things, an opportunity came up recently. <laughs> They're opening down the road for me. There's a big kind of tourist area. So let me just... Uh, Refresh my coffee buds. Mmm. Cold coffee. There is a tourist area. 
called Dawlish Warren, which is the next town over. And uh, they're just opening a Pirate's Cove. Pirate's Cove. And they've got kind of all loads of different attractions there. I went down there. I spied a business opportunity. I have dressed up as Captain Jack. Uh, I've got a, a, an authentic outfit. Uh, and I've impersonated Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies a few times in the past, uh, for, mainly for charity events. But this time I thought, hey, there's a bit of profit to be made here. So I went down there in my full attire. And unfortunately, they're still building the bloody thing. There's just workmen on site chiseling out this gigantic skull thing. Um, I was like, oh God, I've dressed up like this for no reason. But I thought, you know what, screw it. I'm going to go there anyway. So I walked across the construction yard and was like, I want to speak to the gaffer. And the gaffer came out. And it turns out it's a family-run affair. They, these, these people on the construction site weren't just contractors. They were the people who run this attraction. And I spoke to him, and he was like, I love it. How much do you charge? And uh, I said, oh, I don't know, 60 quid an hour. And he was like, yeah, that sounds good. I'm like, wow, really? <laughs> Bloody hell. Uh, and he said, we're having a grand opening. We want you to, to be here. So we exchange details, and I'm going to be... For one night only, possibly longer, Captain Jack Sparrow as a job on a freelance basis. So that's interesting. I also shot um, a few little bits of video outside other businesses, which weren't open yet. Because uh, it's not quite the tourist season. Imploring them to hire me so that I can um, drag punters their way. Oh, hello. Captain Jack here. I just noticed your sign. Staff wanted. Full and part-time. Then I bring them over this way and you sell them a baguette. Jobs are good. Yeah, the only problem is I don't know if I can physically do it. I mean, it wasn't that hot. It was about 20 degrees Celsius on that day. The, I was out there for two hours just speaking to people and, and drumming up interest and... Oh my god, I was so hot. I was so hot. Obviously I'm wearing a wig, uh, two belts, a sash, a waistcoat, quite a thick linen shirt. It's just baking that outfit. I, I walked away from the whole thing with a, with a headache. Um, and that was only after two hours in moderate heat, so I don't know how feasible it would be. Let me just get rid of some of this junk. To do it full time in the blaring summer sun. But it was fun, I, you know, it was nice just walking around, get people asking for photos and things like that, which is, it was always fun. Do I need the string? I don't really need the string. I've got loads of sugar cane back home, I'll throw that away. But yes, if you're in doubt and you're in college and you're wondering what to do with your life, you too should just be a flipping pirate. It's the way to live, man. Going back to music, uh, Ben Kwai. Further to my question, um, I can't remember what the question was, I'm afraid, in the last episode. But further to my question, would you, do you, would you, what? My further question to you would be, what other metal bands do you really like and would recommend checking out? Also, bonus question, what's your musical guilty pleasure? Uh, we talked about this, oh, we've hit bedrock already. And absent-mindedly just mining as I answer questions. Let's get back up to Diamond Layer. <gasps> Ooh, excitement! Stuff going on around here. Why am I going up that way? This'll do nicely. Go this way. Yeah, I did kind of answer, and we had a lovely discussion in the uh, comments about that. Um, favorite metal band, got to be Harm Your Baby. The best metal band in the world! There is talk of reviving that project. Uh, I'm speaking to a guy, an established musician, who loves it and wants to do a new Harm Your Baby album for the modern age, but be even more ridiculous with it. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Probably not. Too many other things on my plate. Like being a pirate. Uh, my favourite metal band, um, aside from Slipknot, would probably be Machine Head. 
if you don't know Machine Head, I'll put a link up there. Check it out. To one of just the most pump up best moments in metal I can think of. Ah, and there goes the diamond pickaxe. For shame, for shame. Just check out the blindingness of that solo. It's so pumped up, it makes me want to put my head through a brick wall, seriously. A lot of Machine Head tracks are like that, and that's why I just love them. Oh god, I love it. But yeah, look at that in intro, just listen to it. Listen to it with your ears, I've timestamped it so it goes straight to that bit, but just listen to the whole bloody song. It's incredible. Guilty pleasure, musically. I don't believe in guilty pleasures. You shouldn't be guilty for liking music, no matter how weird or crap anyone else might find it. Ace of Bass is one. I love Ace of Bass. Uh, I've got a fondness for a lot of like early 90s kind of music, which even I know it's rubbish, but just nostalgia and you know what I mean. Uh, and again, return question to you chaps. Yeah, let me know what your worst, worst musical guilty pleasure is so that everyone else in the comments can ridicule you. <laughs> Uh, where are we now? We are at yeah, layer 16. Getting lots of ore here. Lots of ore. This is good. Obviously not finding any cows down in the depths, which is actually what I came here to do, but never mind. Jump cut! Welcome back. I am the confused. What the hell's going on? I seem to have circled back on myself. I don't know what I'm doing. How is this? How did this happen? How has this befallen me? This state of confusion and loss and ineptitude! I don't know how to get back out either. Why didn't I see this? Hmm. Anyway, moving on. Final question of the episode. Mark Kleinstra! My question from the previous video still stands. Of course Mark is referring to, and this is annoying, I thought I'd hit every single question in the last episode and gotten all caught up. But I missed one, I missed Mark's. Uh, sorry about that bro, it was hidden underneath the read more bit. Um, he said, I, would you ever be up for video collaborations? And now that I'm addressing it, it's a moot point because Mark and I have since collaborated on a video. We did the Cricket is boring and confusing video. Together he kindly provided the voice of Bruce Coleman Scott Parkinson to mate. There's a few lines in that video. Um, I nearly didn't put that video up actually. I wasn't happy with how the video turned out, like the editing was really sloppy. And ScreenFlow crashed on me. I lost the master file halfway through so I had to put it up as is. Luckily I didn't lose the whole thing, but yeah, I nearly just didn't upload it, but uh, the Cricket World Cup had reached a climax, and I thought, well, this is well-timed. Chance of it going viral, possibly. I'll throw it up. So there it is. You can, you can see that by clicking there if you like. Oh, I can experiment with the new YouTube annotation cards thing. Hopefully that's worked. There it is. Hopefully. Good. Look at that if you haven't already. Yeah, so Mark, we have collaborated. Uh, and indeed, we collaborated on the most mental weekend ever. Oh, I've just given away his identity! Ah, oh, shoot, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Mark was the person with whom I partied in Amsterdam. There we go, the cat is out the bag. Jesus wept. That was just... that weekend, man. I can't even. I can't even. The hypothesis we had for the weekend was, is it possible to party so hard that you can kill yourself? We found out you can. We, there was a, there is a line, basically. We walked up to the line and twerked all over it. That is how much disregard we had for the line. Is this how I get out? Where am I? No, dead end. Yeah, that was just mad. But um, what was funny was I got there and I got there on the Friday with a friend and we hooked up with 
another friend we have in Amsterdam. Uh, amazing city. I try and get out there once a year. I love it so much. And yeah, we got there and I was like, right, I'm, I'm meeting a subscriber tomorrow morning. This is kind of a big deal. Well, actually, we were going to meet in the afternoon because I knew I wasn't going to be alive in the morning. Um, Mark disregarded that and turned up in the morning. I hadn't slept in like 36 hours. So here's me going, oh god, I need to make a good impression. I was nervous and all the rest of it. Um, he turned up and I'm like a walking zombie. Uh, we talked afterwards. I couldn't remember the first two hours of meeting. I was that far gone. Um, <laughs> we went to a pub and he did a bit of an interview. I'm, I'm literally lost right now. I'm just going to have to go straight up, I think. Yeah, he did an interview with me, which, according to him, is, like, horrendous. Like, I just look like I'm on the verge of death. Um, he's not released it. Maybe, maybe he will at some point. He hasn't even sent me the footage yet. Uh, but we ended up having a bloody marvellous time. So much so, and I hope the feeling's mutual. Um, I'm disappointed that we live in different countries, so that we can't do that kind of thing more often. Although maybe to a, to a lesser extent. I've never heard someone try to throw up their very soul before, but Mark nearly managed it. It was quite impressive. Uh, Mark, actually, is now even further removed from us. He is uh, in Japan, learning Japanese and running a vlog as he does so. So go check that out while I try and escape this nightmarish cave that I seem to trap myself in. So yes, that's that. You go check out Mark's vlog in Japan. He's big in Japan. Tonight, tonight, big in Japan. Tonight. Ooh, oh, the East is East Japan. Oh, you're big in Japan. Sorry, no more singing. That's a new rule for this channel. No more singing. Let's get back up, find some cows, and then return back home. Not the most riveting of episodes, I will grant you that. But just trying to get back in the saddle here. Right, finally out of the cave, and slightly puzzled as to which way to get back to the coast we started at. Um, this way, I think. Shouldn't be walking out at night, but adds a little bit of danger into the mix. Make things a tad more interesting. So yeah, I'm going to carry on working in between episodes on, on progressing. So when we come back, it may be a couple of weeks, but when we return, more progress will be made. And I think we're not far off the inevitable end of the series where we launch the moon, and I reveal to you the I spotted you. Oh, you got a friend as well. Where I reveal to you the online server. And we can all join in. But in the meantime, do continue to leave questions that I can ask the next time I record. Oh, I did miss one. Sorry. Rabbit heart. Okay, final, final question. How's the movie coming along? Still learning animation? Do you keep a hanky next to your bed? Okay, one at a time. The movie. Ah, it's kind of dead in the water, unfortunately. I think it's always going to be on the... Duel on the Ice. Bye. <laughs> How's the movie coming along? Unfortunately, uh, it isn't. I'm afraid, chaps, it isn't. I think it's always going to be on the back burner. There is a man out there somewhere, stuck on top of a pole in an alien canyon, and his story needs to be told because it's a good story. But I do not have the skills at present necessary to do it justice. I was working on the test footage. I was really happy with my acting. And the script itself is great, but just the technology available, and for me as a one-man film crew, to do it justice wasn't happening. My integrity, integrity, my integrity alarm kind of went off, and I thought, I can't ask people for money to fund this. It's not going to be what they deserve. And you need a substantial amount of money for a project like that. Uh, I was going to shoot for $20,000. And that's at the bare minimum. Most people say, take your figure and double it because you will run into problems. So and I just don't have the following necessary to, to raise that kind of cash. 
The whole thing would have been a big waste of not only my time, but yours as well. So that is on the back burner. It has been replaced by other projects. Two, possibly. That I'm not going to mention or talk about, really. Oh, good, there's that canyon. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about them because... Well, look at the last time I mentioned the movie. I, I hinted at it, I talked about it, and it ended up being uh, just a washout. So I'd rather just hold back until I've got something more concrete. Are you still learning animation? Yes! Yes, I did. Uh, that animation I did um, is the Earth... Is the moon a planet? That got picked up by a rather major blog, so that got a, a big increase in views and things. So that, that was nice, that was a nice bonus. Uh, especially since, oddly, I discovered the audio of that clip that I animated via the blog who went on to pick up my animation. So that was a strange twist of fate. So that was nice. Yeah, I'm still plugging away. It's very time consuming. Uh, if you ever see me not make videos for a few weeks, it's probably because I've got an animation in the works. And one of the big projects I was just talking about will be animation based. I'm having a lot of fun with 2D animation. Trying to work on my style and, and figure out what I can and can't do. Uh, yeah, so, so that's jolly good fun. I'm enjoying that. And lastly, do you keep a hanky next to your bed? I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. No idea what you're talking about. Oh, did you get my postcard, by the way? I sent Rabbit Heart a postcard for guessing correctly in the in the, the live stream I did about top 10 video games. He guessed my, my personal favourite pick. I sent him a prize. Let me know if you got it. If you didn't, that's been lost forever in the Royal Mail service. I apologise. That should be with you by now. I don't know how long it takes for things to reach Canada. There we go. Well, we are here at the end of the episode. Bit of a rambly, walky, miney one. They're necessary from time to time. Just wanted to check in, let you guys know that Sir Reginald lives! Thank you so much for the great questions. I hope I have answered them all to your satisfaction. Give this video a thumbs up just to let me know that you're still on board with this series as we approach ever closer to the moon. Subscribe if you haven't already. There'll be some links in a moment with which you can do that. And follow me on Twitter. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. I'll see you next time, whenever that may be. More Skyrim on the way. More funny videos that aren't gaming related. Etc, etc. Cheerio. And good night.